In this video, we're going to talk about Bionano Genomics, trading under the ticker symbol BNGO. Bionano Genomics is a startup operating in the genomics sector and has been a popular stock to pick and a topic of conversation ever since the late 2020, after the company managed to develop tests that are better and more affordable than the competition. This was mentioned in scientific magazines and picked up by ARK Invest managed by Kathy Wood. This was a really major catalyst for the stock because it attracted the attention of many retail traders. Its appeal is the fact that Bionanogenomics seems to have a lead in the sector and the sector itself is considered to be on the road of becoming a lot more significant and relevant in years to come. The trading volume of Bionanogenomics has recently been 9.7 million shares compared to an average volume of 8.3 million shares. Over the previous 52-week period, its price has fluctuated between $2.57 and $15.69. The market cap of Bionanogenomics is currently at $864 million, compared to the EV of $1.2 billion. The difference between the market cap and its enterprise value is the premium or discount financial market is willing to allocate to buy nanogenomics based on its current fundamentals, leverage, asset composition, and the current mood of the market. Some of the examples of impact on leverage is by the fact that if a company has a lot of debt, then the market may feel uncertain about the company's capacity to pay back the debt in both principles and interests, which then in turn may negatively impact its profitability and solvency. Another key element to understand is the asset composition of many companies, and it is especially true for the growth type companies. For many of those, one of the most significant assets they own is the goodwill. Goodwill is basically an expectation of the market that the company is able to generate more profit or to have more growth than another company partially because it has a good management, stronger brand recognition, bigger following online, and so on. In other words, it's not a tangible asset that companies can use. However, it's often the reason that some companies are perceived to be trading at a discount, because the market cap is lower than the enterprise value, including the value given to the tangibles and intangibles. In comparison to its historical price fluctuations, the stock is 3.8% higher than the one-month low, 3.8% higher than the three-month low, and 16.3% higher than the 52-week low. In terms of the options market, which often gives a hint on the market sentiment on where the stock price is likely going to head toward, the implied volatility is 98.13% compared to an historical volatility of 69.24%. The put call volume ratio is currently at 0.1. In other words, there are a lot more call options than put options. The most recent volume of options traded has been 5,900 contracts within a day, compared to the 30-day average volume of 5,086 contracts a day. In terms of open interest, the most recent volume of open interest has been 158,000 contracts compared to the 30-day average of 173,000 contracts. In terms of shareholder structure, institutional shareholders hold 27.4% of all outstanding shares. The biggest shareholders include BlackRock, Vanguard, and Julius Bayer. The relevance of shareholder structure is important too in order to determine if you should be holding the stock long-term or to view it as a short-term volatility play. If the stock is mainly held by retail traders, then it may be a sign that the stock lacks the depth to justify the long-term trust from shareholders. Of course, there are a lot of exceptions from what I said before, but usually the consensus is that in order for us to trust this company for a long period of time, we should probably see between 15 to 30 percent of institutional participation and not just a short term trade, in which case there may be 95 percent plus 
of retail ownership. Let's also take a look. Let's also take a look at the short interest presence in the stock, which is the amount of positions that aim to profit if the share price falls lower. Sometimes, if there are significant short interest in the total volume, it could be a sign that there is an organized shorting operation going on, like what's going on with GameStop and AMC. The current short interest is 14.8% of the total float, and 35%. Of the dark pool transactions. Now let's also take a look at the indicators. Financial indicators give us a suggestion of what the price movements are showing, and they can be used as one of the considerations to determine what should be our overall approach. The oscillators are showing zero sell, nine neutral, and two buys, and overall the tendency is to buy. The moving averages over the past few days, the moving averages of the past price action has 14 sells, one neutral, and zero buy. The overall tendency from the perspective of the moving averages is strong sell. The moving average can be used to determine whether the stock is overbought or oversold compared to its normal price fluctuations, which can be used to determine if your trade is sufficiently well timed. In terms of pivot points, which are levels of support and resistance sprinkled in the price trends, the support levels are two dollars five cents, three dollars four cents, and three dollars sixty four cents. For the resistance levels, they are four dollars fifteen cents, six dollars twenty two cents, and seven dollars twenty one cents. Looking at bi nano genomics operations, I think it's fair to say that fundamentally the news are encouraging. On December 29th, bi nano genomics published an article stating that they have completed a first prototype for their single molecule imaging system. This system is four times more powerful than the Sapphire system, and the commercial release of the prototype is planned for 2023, which should act as an additional catalyst for BNGO. Market participants, and more specifically the retail traders, are attracted by the company because its technology and business model seems to be head and shoulders above its competitors, and it has very high brand recognition. This is why I think that market participants are often willing to give it a chance to believe that it can succeed as soon as there are encouraging signs that company is doing well. Right now, the company seems to be having excellent technologies, which is one of the reasons why, despite the recent sloppy price action, I believe that the stock is worth to take a look at and to be noted apart. My opinion on the company remains overall worthy of your time, and that it deserves to remain on your watch list and eventually in your portfolio, if you're future oriented. With that being said, definitely don't go in now and instead buy them in small batches when it has found some new support, which has yet to happen for the time being. In terms of its price action, the downward trend has resumed since late 2021, and I believe that it should continue for some time as we move in 2022. So definitely, it's something to keep in mind. This may be explained by the fact that investors have been looking elsewhere from the popular stocks back in 2020, such as short squeeze stocks, and are putting their money into other popular spots like the short squeeze stocks. My recommendation is to make sure that your exposure on Buy Nano Genomics is at a maximum of 0.5 to 1% of the portfolio, but to keep an eye out for any potential support in sight. I would say that the previous peaks over the past few months is a good place to set the initial profit target. Your investment should also take into consideration the market conditions and the surrounding sentiment to determine what kind of asset should be picked, for how much and for how long. First of all, the financial market doesn't reflect the real economy. If the stock market is doing great, it doesn't necessarily mean that companies are hiring people that salaries and living standards are rising. Sometimes it's the exact opposite that happens. Because the stock market is a pool of money where things come in and come out, going to different sectors to be placed. The capital may be used to be invested in a company to improve its efficiency and productivity, but it can also be used to buy up shares and assets 
in order to make a profit. This phenomenon is called financialization, and it means that the more money has been used for non-productive purposes like merger and acquisitions, fees to financial sectors, buying back equity, and so on, the less there is for the real economy. Another way to put it is that ever since 2008, the Dow Jones has increased significantly. But people don't necessarily see this growth in tangible ways. This is why we got to be careful with the assumptions that rising stock price means better outlook for the company. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that the asset is getting more expensive to be bought and that their yields is going down as a result. Additionally, some new phenomenons are now palpable, such as the creation of new bubbles, the participation and influence of retail traders in specific situations, and the anticipation of a massive recession or at least pullback. Bubbles have always been created on and off over the past few centuries, but nowadays, it's quite interesting to see the speed at which an organic bubble can be created back in 2020. Because almost immediately after the major collapse of the financial market back in early 2020, the market decided to pour a massive amount of capital in the EV sector and anything that's related to it. Stock prices went up the sky and for a moment, it really felt like any EV stock can be a golden goose. Another way to say this is that any SPAC with an EV company in it will become the next Tesla, right? Even if it didn't last that long, this episode definitely allowed the market participants to park a lot of their money in a sector, leaving it with either a lot of profits or at least avoiding incurring large losses because they left their money in the blue chips or the sectors heavily affected. The involvement of retail traders in companies has also been much more pronounced in recent months, especially in the scenarios of a short squeeze. Companies may have short sellers who believe that the stock will decrease in value. The short squeeze consists of buying the stock price up to force the short sellers to recover their positions, which will then also trigger an even bigger increase of stock price as a result. Of course, I'm not saying that this is always rational. I'm not even saying that those companies always have a convincing narrative. So, for example, if you play video games, ask yourself if you personally bought all your games at GameStop, knowing that you can buy the same games just online in the comfort of your home. But nevertheless, retail traders do have a much more significant influence in the stock price nowadays, for the better or worse. Personally, I think that as long as the volatility is high or gets higher, it'll create more opportunities. The final phenomenon is the anticipation of a recession. Many people have been expecting something of that sort to happen ever since 2008. There were quite a few companies that were supposed to go bankrupt because their debt structure is no longer sustainable or that their business model is bad. But overall, the system was able to hold its ground, especially in the North American market. This is partially because capital around the world often choose to come to the American capital market when things get heated back home. This is especially the case when geopolitical tensions increase around the world. In order to make sure that capital can provide a steady return without being affected too much by the central bank policies and inflations, I think that this phenomenon will increase its pace as time passes by, at least for the next couple of years. This is why we will likely see the blue chips continuing their ascension, even if the growth stocks, even if for the growth stocks, things may be a lot more nuanced. The bottom line in all this is that the environment is getting more uncertain and volatile in a context where asset yields will probably remain quite low because the real economy cannot be improved with just money. As far as we're concerned, this means that the patience would be a great virtue for all of us and that there will be plenty of opportunities to eye for better prices. With that being said, always make sure to keep your positions diversified and keep the risk level under check. 
speculative positions should play a small part in your overall portfolio. I would say it's better to keep them below 10 to 20 percent of your total holdings. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.